The train, for its type, is the most powerful vehicle on land. And the engines of Sodor are the power behind the docks, industries and branch lines that make up the world-renowned Northwestern Railway. These are the stories of Sodor. When the mine at Marston Heights closed down, we had to start importing coal from the mainland. The engine that most often handled these jobs was Francis. The Class 46 would deliver trains up and down the line, dropping off trucks along the way. While he carried out this assignment well, I'd be lying if I said he did so without a fuss. Phew, how humiliating. Shunting dirty trucks filled with dirty coal into dirty sidings. What a waste of my talents. Same bollocks, different day. I wouldn't expect a lowlife like you to understand, James, but engines such as I are above certain jobs. I swear, if I ever meet the tosspot who designed you, I'm gonna kill him, if you say so. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'll be on my way. Actually, Francis, there's been a change in the schedule. James will take your train the rest of the way. I need you to cover for me. And why is that? Has your reversing gear jammed again? Oh dear, I really pity you steamies. There is so much that can go wrong with you. I assume your next train is trucks? Specifically, those ones. The Flying Kipper? Surely you jest. Surely you go. Oh fine. Hmm, fish. I can smell it from here. How does it compare with ditch water? Very droll, James. What happened? His cooling system failed. He claims it was caused by handling too many goods trains. <laughs> Same old Francis. Do you know him? Yes, I helped design him. You've got to be kidding. What was that, James? Um, nothing, sir. So this is Barry? Yes, indeed. Barry, allow me to introduce Gordon, James, and Reginald. I believe you've already met Donald. Yes, sir. Nice to meet all of you and to see you again, Donald. Likewise. Bust my buffers. You look a hell of a lot better than the last time I saw you. I feel better too. And it's all because of this genius. Thank you, Rob. Looks like the experiment is a success. What experiment? Well, for the past few years, I've been working on a procedure to improve the performance of non-faceless steamies while simultaneously reducing the running costs required to maintain them. Is this your special project, Rob? It is. I call it Steam Diesel Conversion, or SDC. Which means what? That despite appearances, I'm actually a diesel! You're going to have to explain that. Certainly. Basically, Barry has a diesel electric motor installed in his boiler that powers all of his gears. And instead of coal and water, he runs on oil stored in his tender. And... it works? If today was any indication, yes. I had such an easy time of it dragging Francis and his train to Crovin's gate, and I barely used any fuel. 
I think we can pop the champagne early, Rob. Settle down, Barry. I agree the initial results are promising, but we need to conduct a lot more tests before we can celebrate. And so the experiment began. All over the island, Barry carried out a variety of tasks aimed at testing the effectiveness of steam diesel conversion, and by all indications, it was very effective. He was faster, stronger, and more fuel efficient than he ever was as a steamy. In fact, he was faster, stronger, and more fuel efficient than many of us. This caused some concern he would let this superiority go to his radiator but I'm pleased to say it didn't. Barry was a remarkably humble and helpful chap. In between tests, he would take extra trains for us. Indeed, he was very eager to work, perhaps a little too eager. Come on, Rob, this train's due to leave in five minutes. Take it easy, Barry, we're still performing the final checks. Why do we have to do this every time? Because collecting data is the second most important part of an experiment. And what's the first? Ensuring the test subject is safe. We'll be done soon. Don't worry. Now that's a man who cares. I know. I just wish I could take a train without being fussed over. I know the feeling. During my trials back on the Northeastern Railway, I was so eager to show off what I could do. It landed me in hot water many times. And a rubbish tip once. A rubbish tip? Yep, I was speeding along and came off the track. I rolled down a hill and landed in a pile of garbage. After that, everyone used to say they could tell I was coming because of the whiff. They started calling me that so often they probably forgot my real name. Which is what? Ignatius? Can I keep calling you whiff? Of course. Alright Barry, everything checks out. We're good to go. How come you stopped? According to Rob, my engine was running hot. I told him bollocks. That was nothing compared to the heat my fire used to make. He said that might be the problem. What's hot for a diesel may be mild for a steamy. I think he's being overly cautious. I don't. It takes very little for a motor to overheat. If that happens, the results can be disastrous. Take my advice, Barry. Pace yourself and only handle the jobs you've been assigned, not the work of those less capable. What's that supposed to mean? It means you should stop fobbing your work off onto Barry. They're not fobbing off anything, Francis. I want to work. Now that is the sign of a really useful engine. You should follow his example, Francis. You can start by taking the goods train you've been assigned to handle. Oh, fine. I don't agree with how Frank said it, but he has a point. You should slow down a wee bit. Learn to rest once in a while. I've rested enough, Donald. I need to work. If you say so, laddie. Rattling radiators, you look terrible. I feel terrible. Ugh, I think it's the coal. Something's off about it. You're in no condition to work. I have to. I'm already late to pick up the kipper. Don't worry, I'll take it instead. Are you sure? Should we ask Rob about it? He won't be here for another 20 minutes. I'm sure he won't mind. This is an emergency after all. <sighs> Alright, but remember, I know, I know, take it easy. I'll be fine.
Are you all right, Barry? I've been better, so that's what a hot motor feels like. I'll remember that. I'm sorry, Rob. Don't be. I'm the one who's sorry. Why? When I arrived at Napford, I spoke to Donald. He told me about some of the things you said, and I'm kicking myself for not conducting a psychological examination on you before starting the experiment. You think I need one? Let's find out. You told Donald you need to work. Why? Because I've been in a coma for the past seven years? Does that make you angry? Of course it does! A couple of pillocks cocked up my paperwork, and poof, my life is gone! And overworking yourself will change that? No, but at least when I'm busy, I don't have to think about what happened to me. I see. What does that mean? That we have a lot of work to do. He was right about that. The experiment was put on hold while Barry underwent treatment. It took some time, but he was able to work through most of his issues. When he returned to work, he was still helpful, but not compulsively so. He also completed the remaining tests without incident. BR was impressed by the results and adopted steam diesel conversion into its maintenance program. Over the following years, countless non-faceless steamies would have it done, myself included. Aside from improving performance and reducing running costs, SDC increased our longevity, just as Robert hoped. He was thrilled his project had been so successful and proud to learn that many referred to steam diesel conversion as the overhaul.